You guys, you guys, I have awesome news. You have AIDS? No, this Saturday for my birthday, my mom says she's taking me to Casa Bonita in Denver, and I get to invite three friends. Wow, Casa Bonita! Woo-hoo! What's Casa Bonita? Dude, haven't you ever been there? It's a big Mexican restaurant, but they have, like, cliff jumpers and Black Bart's Cave and all kinds of stuff. It's like the Disneyland of Mexican restaurants. This Saturday, awesome! Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita, food and fun and a festive atmosphere, Casa Bonita. Who said I'm inviting you? What are we talking about today? Yeah. Working class, super mega bien, Casa Bonita, Cantina Loca. Stand back! Cartman, stop it. I am going to Casa Bonita. Okay, today's a treat. I'm here with one of my favorites. Her friends call her Loca, but probably your enemy, enemies, if she has any, call her Loca too. I doubt that she <laughs> does. But here we are at Cantina Loca and Chef Dana Rodriguez. It's so good to catch up with you. Nice to see you again. I call uh, December 8th kind of catch up with Dana Rodriguez day because coincidentally enough, I log into Facebook this morning and says, you have a memory from one year ago. And one year ago today, there we were at working class and we were on your patio and I took a picture of you. I loved it. But what's changed in one year? Oh my God, so many things. It's, it's been uh, crazy, uh, very, I guess, um, so many um, emotions coming through the year. You know, like you get so busy, mm -hmm. you struggle with your business, yep. you're worried that you're gonna lose all your businesses, mm -hmm. but at the same time you try to build another one. Mm -hmm. So it's so many things happening. Uh, Do you remember your struggles from a year ago? What oh, we were talking about yep. last year? Yeah. Couldn't get on your patio, why? Bio bureaucracy. I mean, we are 25% capacity mm -hmm. back then. And working class, you know, it's 47 seats, so it's like, is that worth it to have 10 people in the restaurant? Yeah. Uh, and all of those things. And at the same time, I already have something going on in my head about, about this place. And I was thinking like, well, I need to make it bigger. What are the struggles that I have? And you know, you never be able to say, I build something perfectly. Mm -hmm. But from any situation you learn and you kind of adjust things. So yeah, I remember that was one of the big things. So I decided to make a big bar. So people, if we are at 25%, I can still do a lot of people here. So. I 100% remember everything from last year. When we look into a crystal ball though, and you say, okay, let's just leapfrog one year later. Would you, is this what you've pictured? All of this stuff going on? Of course, we'll talk about Casa Bonita, don't worry. <laughs> yes, I mean, no, I wasn't thinking, you know, I was thinking the most part about to how I'm going to be able to open this place. Mm -hmm. You know, after COVID, no one wants to invest in restaurants. People think we're gonna close, sure. we're not gonna be able to open door, our doors again at working class and super mega. So it was so many things, but nothing like taking a new gig mm -hmm. for, you know, my restaurants are pretty small. And how many meals I make a day, probably between those three, compared to what is the new concept, mm -hmm. that's not even close to think about it. So that wasn't on my, Brain. You're trying to just stay going, right? I mean, last year this time, and we were at working class, and there were things going, but it was a ghost town. Yep. There was nobody around. You really weren't doing business. Nope. You're just trying to figure out how to forge ahead, how to keep, how to keep it going, right? Was Casa Bonita even a thought in your mind at that time? Were you working on that? Uh, uh, no, not, not at, all. at all. Not even on your radar. I, I, I don't think by then, I, you know, I don't have social media. By then, I don't even know who was behind, if they're close, if they're selling the business. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no clue what's, what's happening. Back then, I was just worried about to even keep my doors open at working class and super mega. And this one, I just literally put a pause on it. And mm -hmm. I say, when I can do it, I'll do it. But it was more like, try to figure it out those two you know and the most important thing i know we talk a lot about our uh, mental health mm -hmm. you know for me it's like if i just close all the businesses and I start working i'll die probably very soon mm -hmm. i always need to continue you know doing something so that's what we were doing back then at working class like let's make burritos let's make coffees with bourbon let's let's keep trying do what know? has to be done today yep so looking forward to like a Casa Bonita or that type of thing. I mean, uh, Dona Loca was on your mind yep. though, because that the wheels were in motion yep. for that. But you're like, wow, we're in COVID. Will things change? Will it get back to normal? And here we are and it's a refreshing day. And I'll tell you what, half of a great interview is just doing the who, what, where, when, why. Who? Chef Dana Rodriguez. <laughs> where? We're at Dona Loca right now. We're gonna talk about Casa Bonita in a minute. 
Uh, the what? Yeah, Casa Bonita. Where? You know where it is, right? When? Lakewood, Colorado. That's right. <laughs> Lakewood, Colorado. When? They're saying what? Summertime? I think between summer and fall next year. Summer and fall next yeah, year. Yep. Boy, you're giving yourself some cushion there, chef. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know restaurants, you know, obviously they have some um, probably more set days because they have events. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, knowing, you know, building restaurants from scratch and changing things, and I know these days it's hard to find equipment, it's, fine to hire, it's hard to hire people and all of those things. I always give myself a little bit of like, yeah, I think in between some summer cushion. and fall, yeah. Yeah, under promise, over deliver, right? Exactly, I mean, That's what right? you have to do. That's what we do. Okay, <laughs> and then we get to, you know, Casa Benita, the last one, the why. Why in the hell are you doing this? Uh, why, yeah. why, chef, why? One specific reason, yeah. that was the first restaurant that I applied yep. when I moved from Mexico. Um, in my mind, it was, it's a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have people that they speak, you know, I didn't speak English, still speak English. But I was like, well, maybe there they, I can find some people that they can help me to, to start, you know, something here in Colorado. So I went to apply. Obviously, I didn't know that it was a big company. I didn't know that it was inside a big Mexican Disneyland or whatever, you know, I thought it was just a restaurant. Um, they look at my application and they say, well, what do you work before? Well, I don't work in restaurants before. I, you know, I just moved from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, I always own retail stores because me and my parents, we always have little stores with uh, groceries or clothing or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to engineer computers in Mexico. So they're like, but no cooking, nothing. like." you're not qualified to work in this mm -hmm. restaurant because you don't have the experience, basically. So, um, and that was in 19? That was in 1998. Eight. Yes, 1998. And, you know, I said, well, whatever. I think always think... Just didn't get a call back, did you? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I just think, like, things happen for a reason. You know, shit happened in the perfect moment. Yep. So I never fight for something. I'm just like, fine, if it's meant to be, let's do it. If not... Peace out. Yep. You know, that's the way that I function. So thanks to them saying no, I get hired at Panzano. Mm -hmm. That's how I meet my mentors. That's how I meet Tony, yeah. my business partner at Working Class Now in uh -huh. Super Mega BN. And you know, now when you start to put in things together, I was doing this interview and they asked me like about your life. And I say, it is so interesting to see almost like a movie from where I live, Mexico the farm when I was eight years old to the city so I can go to school mm -hmm. and then what I was thinking I can do in life and then when I move here and where I am right now it's just like whoa do, can you see it makes sense now can you see like you needed that experience you need to go there you needed that door to close you needed that door to open does it make a little sense now I wasn't looking for anything that had happened so I, I just let myself go mm -hmm. you know and Whatever comes in life, I just take it and I turn it into something positive and it keeps growing. Yeah. And I, that's the way that I see it. You know, if it wasn't for that little moment when we moved from the farm to Juarez, if I didn't meet the right people in school, if I, everything is just meant to be. Absolutely. That's the way that I Sequential feel order. it. Well, here's what's up. Mad props to you because you've broken tons of ceilings. I, know, I mean, it's like, it should go without saying, but no, I mean, you're a woman, chef in a kitchen that has mad respects from a ton of people. You're a business owner now. You just busted it out, woman. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. What Thank in you. the world? All right, we need to take a break. We'll come right back. We are at Cantina Loca, a new concept. We're gonna talk about that as well. There's so much going on in this gal's life right now. I don't know how you manage it, but we're gonna <laughs> dig into the stuff that I know you people and people don't really like the word foodies, but like culinary crusaders of Denver and service industry folks, there's some questions you've been telling me you want me to ask Chef Dana Rodriguez. I'm going to do that. When we come back, we'll be back in a flash. The Modern Eater Show will continue. Oh, awesome. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Can I just eat some of your... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, oh got to get back my cave. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Coming through Blackbox cave. Uh, oh, scary! Look at skeleton! Oh man, I'm so scared! Ah. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater and uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators. 
You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120, there's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here in our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. Hey there, barbecue all-star. This is your year. So what if you weren't drafted? The only draft you need to be worried about is actually spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T and it's adult for the word beer. It's barbecue season, baby. Now get out there and grill your ass off. Oh, look at these babies. We've been working hard on this. You know what this is? This is Brut Le Grand. Belgian style Brut Champagne Beer. We're one of only a handful of breweries that produce this beer in the entire world. Comes out this Thanksgiving, available only in the tasting room. Brut Le Grand, come get you some. Um, this concept's fantastic. We're gonna dig into that a little bit, but I wanna get into the, kind of the nuts and bolts of Casa Bonita. That's a huge juggernaut machine oh, there. Yeah. I have a confession to make to you. Uh-oh. I was born and raised in Colorado, in Denver. I was born at St. Anthony's Hospital on Colfax, not far wow. from Casa Bonita. I've never been in the doors of Casa Bonita. Wow, what's wrong with you? Well, that's what I'm, uh, that's <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. Question. So I was kind of thinking back to myself and I was like, you know, wh wh why haven't I? Or was it just an opportunity? I remember a place called Yum Yum Tree that was here in Colorado. All you old school people knew, know Yum Yum Tree is kind of just all these different concepts and you go eat and get your food and kind of food court stuff. But the rap with Casa Bonita was it's just, it's for kids. Yep. It's a little kid place, right? Yeah. So then when I hear Chef Dana Rodriguez, executive chef at Casa Bonita and partner, I go, okay, I'm a business guy. I kind of understand why this is happening, but do they need her? I mean, <laughs> when the shot, you, uh, uh, your kind of motto right now is change nothing, elevate everything. Yep. Is that what I've been hearing? So that's the food, yep. probably the ambiance. But when the shine wears off the apple and you're out of that money burn rate, and you're like, okay, now let's look at the books. You, do you start to cut corners again? Does the food go back to where water finds its own level? Is this just a thing to create the hype? I'm just gonna throw that right I at know. you. <laughs> you know what, I think one thing that everybody remembers, everybody in Colorado has been at least once in Casa Bonita, except for you. Yes. But everybody else has been, and everybody agreed that the food wasn't great, you know, now, uh, is that an admission? Are we now settling that thing that Casa Bonita's food was not great? I mean, everybody say the same thing. I've been there many times and I, I mean, I just, you have to order the food to get inside. So whether you eat it or not, it's like you have to get it, so. But as a kid, my mom would say, hey, you don't get a good piece of, of steak. You get this, you get hamburger because you wouldn't appreciate it. Yeah. You wouldn't appreciate good food. So if it's still gonna be kid centric, Will it be appreciated, your elevated food concept? I think these days, I mean, I see a lot of kids and families that they start educating their kids to eat better, mm -hmm. to eat healthier, you know? And back then in 1974, I mean, they don't even have one item vegetarian. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a thing. No. It's just like, okay, here's your bowl of mashed potatoes. Here's your enchilada <laughs> with like the canned cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what it was, you know? And there wasn't another option. So people do it. But I think now, I mean, we can, we've been changing a lot. Society has been changing a lot in the way that you want to eat yourself, the one that you want your kids to eat, and how you want to, them to remember a good place with good food. And now adults can remember that with good food and good drinks. So they're not just there to bring the kids and you figure it out. And then, you know, all my friends say, oh, when I used to be little, my parents let me here. Mm -hmm. They let us run around for like two hours and then they're like, okay, time to go. But they don't eat, they don't drink, nothing there. So now, those are the things that we try to elevate and change, you know, now it's gonna be fresh margaritas, we're gonna do it in drops, so they can be quick, they can be good quality. The food is gonna say, I try to keep, we're changing 
anything and improving everything. That's what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. So that being said, if I have, I have the first menus from 1974 and I was just looking at the prices, you know, oh it's, my God. it was a place affordable for yeah. everybody yes. to go. So that's something that I need to keep in mind when I make, make something food, new sure. is that it has to be affordable. So what, uh, what product I'm going to use to call it that is healthy, but it's not super expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a lot of things that that's the same thing that we do at our sure. other restaurants. Um, but I say that'd be funny to have the same, you know, it's an enchilada plate that all the kids love it. But now it's with house make tortillas, mm -hmm. house make enchilada sauce, you know, like all the recipes and everything made from scratch and real cheese from Mexico, Oaxaca cheese, asadero, like the good stuff. That's what is going to make the difference. I think now even the kids are going to remember the first bite they have. Nice. And that's what, that's what the goal is. Wow. Does it have to be just for, oh, okay, so I'm 49 year old guy, never been married, don't have kids. I'm going to go in. I got to go in. I, I want to see what's up. Will I go back? 100%. Okay. So the goal right now to us is just um, to have different ways that people, you know, people always, what they see on their phone on Instagram, when they hear, when they, you know, we are very about what we see, uh, not much what we really think. So I think when people start, when you go the first time and you say, oh, wow, this line is super fun. The food is good. You can have drinks here. You can have a full service, mm -hmm. like sitting and say, you know, you don't have to go back and like get refills for free or this or that, mm -hmm. or, you know, you can still do that, but you have a person who take care of you. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen something really cool in the show, mm -hmm. you're having an amazing drink and good food, I, I bet you go back. I bet you're right. You fucking go back. I'll go back. You know I will. Uh, and you're going to meet like 30,000 people there. So maybe the next time you're going with yeah. another friends or yeah. a date or uh -huh. I don't know. It's going to be a really cool spot. And I think the most important thing is they've been behind all of this is Matt and Trey. I mean, they are creatives. They are funny people. They mm -hmm. entertain adults. Mm -hmm. So you can see what they're going to try to do over there. It, I mean, it almost seems magical. It gives, I know. It gives me goosebumps like, just thinking about it. Tell me a secret. Come on, tell me a secret in there. I mean, there is not many secrets because everything is going to stay. I guess the only secret and is not really a secret. Because like, why couldn't, talking about, why couldn't we film there today? It's under construction. Like, right now, we, we donate what well, they do, not mm -hmm. me, but I was there to kind of manage some of the stuff. Um, they do all the... You know, it was so all equipment from 1974. Mm -hmm. They have so many plates, so many, um, I don't know, uh, steam tables, uh, blenders, uh, containers, you name it, cheat trays, mm -hmm. all of the stuff that restaurants need. They want to clean everything. So it's new ceilings, it's new floors, mm -hmm. it's new plumbing. Mm -hmm. Nothing in between It's changing on the entertaining. Uh -huh. So that's gonna be a really hard challenge mm -hmm. to put everything back the way that it is to make it clean and brand new and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now the kitchen, they, I think I call probably like 10 people, you know, to go in from all the nonprofits, all the schools that they do culinary mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. So they go and pick up everything for free. All the food went to, uh, we don't waste. So they trying to do like the best thing there. So, you know, given all of that, now rebuilding a kitchen, mm -hmm. that's, that's nuts. To me, it's just like, that's where the whole magic is going to start. Well, they always say a new broom sweeps clean. Yep. And so you're doing a lot of that. And I can imagine when you, you have standards, yep. right? Yep. In order to work and be efficient and, yep. and successful. Uh, so when I look at a project like this, and I think of the undertaking, that not only just to get up and running, to get that locomotive going down the train tracks, but to keep it going, right? We're in a time where supply chain's all jacked up. Yeah. We're in a time where labor is so hard to find. We're in a time where, you know, every penny counts. Yeah. How are you going to go in and make food not a lost leader, but a leader at Casa Bonita? Well, you know, one of the, it's so many components to talk about it, right? The first one is like, I fell in love with the way that Matt and Trey are handling things, to me is very important, you know this. I don't attach myself with just people because either they have money, they have buildings, they have this, they have that. I don't care. They have to be real humans that they take care of the employees, they take care of the community, and they are proving that so far. They keep all the employees from the previous owners. They've been paid right now and they work in a nonprofit. 
So to me, are you, I didn't know that. that's amazing. To me, that was like, investment. those guys are good and they want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Whether they run a restaurant or not before, mm -hmm. they want to do the right thing. The other component is like, yes, it's so hard to find people in this and that. Behind this is Matt and Trey. They can make anything happen. Mm -hmm. So they have a team behind that they work all the time, you know, like, I meet with Crispy, with Katie, mm -hmm. with Kid, with Afshin, like it's so many good people mm -hmm. and the company that they make things work. Mm -hmm. They say, Dana, we're gonna hire you because you can make good food. Mm -hmm. This is your kitchen. You want to be your partner on the culinary side. Mm -hmm. What do you need to succeed? Mm -hmm. And that's- What that was your answer? Like, I need a new kitchen. <laughs> I, I need a it. fucking kitchen. And, and, and that <laughs> support. And, and I have to imagine because you really embed yourself into the fabric of our community, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's just the way that it is. So when you think of labor, do you have a stack of applicants right now when nobody else does? Are you worried about that at all? What does it take to be able to, how many people do you need to employ? I mean, like this might be, be the chance right now. That's going to be, yes. I mean, it's going to be like 300 people. We don't start hiring yet. We're building a team now behind, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be on the culinary part. If we hire a GM and then we together hire managers and beverage director mm -hmm. and then a shark can start hiring people. So it's you're I mean, building the pyramid. Easy, exactly. I mean, that place is that is a monster, sense. you know, okay. like inside when you really think about mm -hmm. it. But just to to give you that answer when, you know, this is Cantina Loca. Mm -hmm. I start talking about this place just a little bit ago, and yes, I have a lot of applications. It's a lot of people, they listen to what Denver has to give. Mm -hmm. And I think they always know that I'm one of those people that I really want to do the right thing. I'm not perfect. We fucked up a lot. Me, Tony, and Tab, we go back and forth. How can we do this for the employees? Insurance, 401ks. What can, how can they make more money on the back of the kitchen? We're not perfect, but we're trying to do the best for that. Absolutely. And I think, to me, when people hear that, I get a messenger. I don't have Facebook, mm -hmm. but I have messenger because that's how I communicate with some mm -hmm. people. So I see my messages like, I want to work with you at Casa Bonita. Mm -hmm. I want to work with you at Cantina Loca. I want to go back to working class. It's always nice that here, I don't even need to do an ad. All the people already, I have it online. So I'm like, as soon as we open, we're gonna do the staff training next Monday. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> for over there, I already got people like, I want to work there. I want mm -hmm. to do this, I want to do that. They keep like 60 employees, which is amazing because it's the base, it's yeah, the core. Good start. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start training them so they fall in love with food. Gotcha. So they can follow my passion, my culture, the philosophy I have in the kitchen. Like this food is good. You taste it. Uh -huh. That's the only way that you can sell it. Nice. You know, it's. I love it. This is Greg Hollenbach, Chef Dana Rodriguez. Um, one last question, then we'll take a break, we'll come back, then we want to talk about your other projects going on, specifically this one right here, which I will be chilling at this place. Um, the Modern Eater. It's about community. It's about agriculture. It's about supply chain. It's about the men and women that work in all of these aspects, the front of the house, the back of the house, Colorado, sourcing great products, Casa Bonita, South Park, all very Colorado centric. Are you going to be sourcing great Colorado products? Yes, so I always trying to do all of the proteins that I use at the restaurants are Colorado based. Obviously produce is one thing Colorado we don't yeah. have, like we cannot have asparagus at this time of the year sure. somewhere, right? We try to get as much as we get, but we have really good people that they find the best. If it's not here, it's in Colorado. If it's not there, it's in Mexico, but we have the best quality of what mm -hmm. we can have. Uh, and you know, I already have meetings with my providers and I say, okay, so this one is not working class with 900 pounds of proteins mm -hmm. a week. This is like 20 times bigger than that. And I'm gonna need all of that. Are you going to be able to find me what I want? What is your plan for that? Yeah. You know, and it's Let like, me know. Because I mean, listen, it might be local, but it might not be the best, right? I mean, so you need quality. So come to me, bring your A game. One thing, Greg, and you know, I am very, uh, balanced person in life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not yes 100%, I'm like, oh, this is all female organization. I think we all have equal rights. Mm -hmm. But with that, it comes a lot of responsibility. You have the rights to be a good person. 
So when you are a restaurant owner or whatever you do for a living, you got to try your best. Mm -hmm. You know, and for a place like that, I want to try the best. Obviously, I was talking to one of my guys and I say, listen, I know you're not going to be able to give me all the lamb that I, I struggle sometimes to find Colorado lamb for work. I got class. a lamb guy. But you know, like, <laughs> yeah. e even like I have three guys in sure. Colorado. Uh -huh. One is in Boulder, Superior Farm. We have other people. And even in a small restaurants, we struggle sometimes. Sure. And I say, I cannot be hunting people to find me some product for Agreed. this place. I agree. So you need to have a plan that you need to have like at least 10 providers mm -hmm. to give me what I need for the menu. Mm -hmm. So we already went in a meeting yesterday. We talk about menu and I say, you need to start putting and having backups for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's just. Hey, Colorado, I mean, right key. here. Get, get, get it ready, get your poop in the group have your A-game ready, but come at them. I mean, you never know. I mean, they might like your Colorado product, and I'd have to believe. I can't wait because I know an innovative mind like you, you're probably going to have, like, Casa Benita hot sauces for sale out on the market. Right? You probably got <laughs> ideas for all kinds of stuff. Okay, we are going to take a break, but one, someone asked me this question. They wanted to know. I was like, I don't know the answer to this. They said, would you ask Dana what kind of shoes she wears? Would, <laughs> what are you wearing today? Can I just go like this, like my cool sneakers? <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. I use Converse. Um, I, said, I use cool sneakers. But obviously, when I'm in the kitchen, I always wear dance clothes. Uh, I always, even like that, you know, it's a good uh, example that you can train your people, like, to be mm -hmm. good at what they do yeah. and respect the environment where you are. So And have fun. Sometimes I wear heels in the kitchen. Last Saturday, I showed up to work in class, and I was, like, ready to rub my night. And... My line could have an emergency, oh, so no. I'm like, oh, shit. Sweater up, T-shirt on. Here we find go. Find me some shoes who has extra shoes and jump on the line. So that was it. it's just what it is. I, you know, that's life. I totally get it. Check it out. The dust is still on the table. It's all <laughs> brand new. First in. That terrifies me. First into a place. It's like, oh, my God, you have to put in everything. You're not coming in and just picking up the pieces where someone nope. else left off. This project is cool. Got a lot of great questions. You need to stick around. We're going to show you some um, commercials right now from our local sponsors. And it is that time of year. Local, 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 local. Just do what you can to support your community. And I think it really makes a difference. We'll be back in a flash. The Modern Eater Show continues. All right, kid, end of the line. Uh, uh. Yay! Jesus Christ! Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with the Annex by Art at Mills and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. Well, kid, you made an entire town panic, you lost all your friends, and now you're going to juvenile hall for a week. <laughs> Was it worth it? Totally. Okay, here we go. We're back. Chef Dana Rodriguez, new project right here. We're going to dig into that. One question I want to set up this segment with is because this is this plagues me every day. My, as you reflect upon the day, right? Even your watch probably does. It's like 
what, you know, mindfulness. What's your mindfulness? So as you're reflecting on your day, chef, and you say to yourself, and, and I've asked you my questions, what's one question you're asking yourself right now? What's one tough question that nobody's asked you, but you're bouncing around in your head right now, and you're trying to find the answers to it? Sometimes I woke up and I answer like, what are you doing? How are you gonna make it work? What are all the opportunities that it comes with everything that you do in your everyday basis? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's who I am. I'm a giver. So instantly when I woke up, I'm like, okay, what's next? What I'm doing today? What I'm going to do with Casa Bonita? How many people I can give the opportunities to grow up with me? Mm -hmm. And that's always, you know, I, it's not like I don't have the answers. I always find the answers for everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a gift, I guess, that I have. You know, I guess like With I never great said, responsibility, like, though. What I'm going to do, well, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I just get up and I say, this is the great way to do the best platform you can ever have mm -hmm. is restaurants, to be helpful, to give people opportunities, to lead people, to teach people. You know, it's just like, in this bar, we're going to do great education about uh, sustainable drinks, you know, sustainable food. Like at Casa Bonita, it's just like all of the same things, you know. Yes, those guys behind, Matt and Trey, when mm -hmm. they, I'm gonna be very honest to you, and probably this is the secret that I have inside my, my heart. You know, when I see the people that they online to get hired for managers, for, you know, it's a lot of applications coming, like what they build before in life. When I see who they are, I woke up the other day and say, why did they hire me? Literally, because I'm a very small person in the community, I try to make the difference, but at the same time I say, they couldn't bring, I'm not gonna throw names, but they couldn't bring all these people that they have 20 restaurants and they can come and manage that. So what I was doing, going through the process interview, they are all about local people. Mm -hmm. They all about the people that they want to do things for the community. Mm -hmm. And they are, that's why it's important that people hear that, you know. People get upset because they say, oh, they're gonna change some things. They're gonna change everything for good. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to appreciate that because not everybody that it has the ability or the backup as those guys have, mm -hmm. they want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. There is other people with much more than them and they don't want to do the right thing because that's not who they are. These guys want to do the right thing and that's the most important thing to me. And it's just like literally a gift. It's like, Dana, you get this for whatever reason I get this phone call and I answer and I say, fuck yeah, yes, let's do it. All the things that he came behind, you know, sometimes I woke up and I'm like with the fear, like, Dana, how are you gonna do 30 mm -hmm. fucking thousand mm -hmm. meals a day? Mm -hmm. And then part of me, my response instantly is like, I'll figure it out. You do 500 at working class. <laughs> yeah. You can replicate that if you have the team. Isn't you know, it's all about the team. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something that we're our own worst enemies? And you struggle through, you go, you get through those insecurities. But I mean, heck, I have a hard enough time just taking care of myself. Your responsibility is so many people and their families, yep. they rely on you. That I'd wake up, oh, oh, right? oh my God. I mean, yeah. if you remember last year, that's what I was. I yeah. was start getting sick because I'm like, I don't want to close my restaurants. My line cooks that maybe have a car payment mm -hmm. or mortgage or rent. Have they have kids mm -hmm. and how I'm going to deal with that. And I carry so much on my shoulders. But at the end of the day, I always have the people in the team to back me up mm -hmm. and help me out to keep everything what it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great people on your team, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, too many to recognize, but it's always that case. You see a successful person, and it's always the team. I mean, I couldn't do anything without my family and my business mm -hmm. partners. You know, those two are my key. My, you know, my close family, they always are there. My business partner, like Tony and Tab, they are not with this. They mm -hmm. let me do my own thing with the cantina. Mm -hmm. But Tab is here every day, making sure we have all the office things. We have payroll. Mm -hmm. She pay the bills. Like, you know, there are helpful people in my life. Uh, my partner and, you know, my boyfriend, yeah. my daughters, my grandkids. It's like, Grandma, when are we going to have a fun day? I'm like, oh, shit, when I have a day off. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. You know it's like, Hang on, it'll be there. And your employees is your family. So now this family that I have for 20 plus mm -hmm. years, I mean, it's going to be a huge family. It's like 300 employees that they mm. It was, it's so nice, Greg. So when I went there, I do the interview and I meet all those people that they've been getting uh, paid through those guys to do a lot of things there. And they're hugging me like, oh my God, you speak Spanish. Oh, you're Mexican. Oh, you're lady. Oh, you look really nice. And I'm like, oh. You, wait, just wait. Yes, wait a Her little bit. Her name's Loca for a reason. I mean, hello. <laughs> but it feels so good that they already feel like, oh, we have a person who's mm -hmm. going to guide us. Yeah. 
they don't have that before and I think that's those feelings you cannot change mm -hmm. with money with anything you know with a title in your jacket like you're the owner of the chef sure. or this or that that's all bullshit when you know it's just like the feelings that you get from customers when they taste your mm -hmm. food and close their eyes and shave their head or your employees when they hug you and they say we're really happy working with you you know Those that food happy dance. Uh, you know? Exactly. <laughs> happy yep. food dance. I don't need to be drunk to dance. Yeah. One of my mentors and business partners, Little Rich Schneider, talked about that with me a lot. There's a difference between being a boss and a leader and transitioning from that boss role into a leader role. Some, it's difficult for some people. I know it is for myself. Other people, it seems like you're a great leader. So let's talk about leading this place. It's brand new. <laughs> brand new, look this at the desk. You got an inspector coming today, final inspection. Yes. <laughs> I love it. This is gonna be so, I mean, I, this right here, I mean, I have to sit here when it opens up. When's it open? Cantina Loca is open the first week of January. It's gonna be an new amazing year. place uh, for, you know, education. It's a bar from Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm Loca, so it's Cantina Loca. Yeah. It's a crazy bar, yeah. just like me. Uh, you can tell the bar is huge, so it's going to be more bar than a restaurant, uh -huh. uh, but we still have amazing food. You know, the menu is a little bit smaller, uh, but it's going to be so cool. I have a tasting room over there uh, that we're going to be doing, you know, education about agave spirits, mm -hmm. whiskey. I bring in some winemakers from Mexico. You know, now it's good, good, good wine yeah. in Valle de Guadalupe. Yeah. And, you know, maybe other chefs that they can come and educate people about sustainable drinks, sustainable food sustainable building like all of this is attached you know that was and in your upbringing wasn't it? i mean that was part of the fabric of you growing up yeah you're just bringing what what you know into fruition yep right here yeah your spirits talk about your spirits so we have uh three uh mezcals you know i love that uh you know what we do with doña loca it is something cool it's not about like who's the star on the bottle what is who's this person that no one gives a fuck about it mm -hmm. you know it's about the story behind we partner with the best people in mexico doing the right thing so they are the one getting what they need to continue doing their job you know i we like to partner on the sense that we're not there to give them pennies and charge here hundreds mm -hmm. and thousands of dollars so we make it work for ourselves this is to help there we have a people that they make or bottles you know i tell you a little foundation like making bottles by hand all the labels are by hand uh, we employ all the girls that they cannot have a job because they have kiddos mm -hmm. so they are in the warehouse making the bottles the kids are playing around so we try to make the difference for them and the story behind is like we're organic we don't add, use any additives uh, no diffuser machines we just go and make the best use and bring it to you guys mm -hmm. so the mezcal is already here for we are in hundred stores if you look at doña loca mezcal and tequilas mm -hmm you find us in 100 places already. Tequila is arriving on the 9th tomorrow. Stop it. How Blanco, excited. Repo, and Añejo. You're such a baller. It's going to be awesome. Just balling out. <laughs> Just doing it right. Uh, wow. And you'll probably be able to get those spirits at Casa Bonita, too, I would imagine. 100%. We have it at Working Class, Super Mega Bien. Mm -hmm. We're in Argonaut. We're on um, Marsix, Montobino, Mr. Beats, like all the small liquor stores all over. We're gonna get it here at the bar. Um, I was waiting to open this bar, hoping that the, mes the tequila is coming. I start with the mezcal because I like to do the education part about mm -hmm. talking about sustainable drinks, mm -hmm. right? And what's behind it. And it's more hard to sell mezcal than tequila mm -hmm. because tequila is selling its own, right? Mm -hmm. But if you put that up there, and then now you have the tequila together, so everything is mm -hmm. just gonna come can at I, the perfect time. Can I come back and film? one of those educational pieces? 100%. I love to do that. What I missed today, anything? Did I miss uh, anything? No, I think we're... I think we covered it, we're right? We're good, yeah. I mean, listen, as we wrap it up here, and we're just, it, this is what I like, is success stories. And it, success doesn't come easy, it's, it's hard work. I mean, you've gotta be present, you've gotta be in all pieces. That's not easy to do, and to stay afloat. So as we end this, and I bid you adieu, I'd like to say to you, not good luck, but continued success. Thank you. Absolutely. See you next month here. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Chef Dana Rodriguez, uh, the two and only. She's everywhere. There's a couple of her. I think she's got a twin. <laughs> I don't know. Greg Hollenbach, we're out of here. Thank you for watching. The Modern Eater Show continues.